Biconomy is a next-gen multi-chain relayer protocol, and in this video, I'll explain what that means and why it's such a killer project to watch out for. Now, I know this isn't a gaming metaverse project, so it may not be as exciting to some viewers, but it is a high-quality protocol solving very real problems in crypto, including problems with crypto gaming, and it's gaining adoption. Plus, Biconomy is backed by Binance and Coinbase Ventures, among other top investors, and the Bico token is about 75% down from all-time high. You're going to want to listen to me on this one. Welcome to DeFi Now, I'm Josh Cross, and if you like ad-free crypto content, then make sure to subscribe down there with the bell notification so you don't miss out on the giveaways like the other ones I have going on right now. Now, as always, this isn't financial advice or an endorsement, it's purely informative. Now, with the disclaimer out of the way, let's jump in. To understand what a next-gen multi-chain relayer protocol is, we need to look at the current problems with onboarding new users to Web3. The main problems I see are, one, insanely high learning curve, two, even when you know how to use Web3, it's still painful, three, insanely high gas fees on Ethereum, four, the EVM-compatible chains that relieve gas fees, Polygon, BSC, Avalanche, each have their own native token that you must have in your wallet in order to do any transactions. And the bridges are slow, expensive, and clunky. Now Solana is great, but it's incompatible with other chains, so that's an even bigger problem than a complicated UX, because then we're having a segregated Web3 economy, which is bad. Honestly, this list goes on and on, so I'm very interested in any serious project that is relieving the issues holding back adoption or helping with interoperability. And that brings me to Biconomy. Biconomy is tackling these issues with the three products that are built to give developers easy tools to make the onboarding process for new users seamless. Think about this. When you download an app, do you expect to have to spend 30 minutes learning and setting everything up? Hell no. Do Web2 applications require you to pay fees for every action you take? No. So what Biconomy is, is a protocol that allows dApps to simplify the transaction process for users improving user experience, and thereby increasing adoption. Now let's look at the three products. Let's start with Hyphen, their cross-chain bridge, because I think that it's probably the most relevant for people watching this video. The Hyphen bridge currently connects Ethereum, Polygon, and Avalanche, and is much faster and cheaper than their native bridges. I personally used Hyphen a few times, and I even featured it in the new Morales DeFi course that I did when covering Polygon, because it just works so damn well. But since that was a while ago when I did those transactions, I did it again for this video. Looking to send 0.03 ETH over to Polygon via their native bridge was estimated to cost almost $57 in transaction fees, and it would take seven to eight minutes. But I did the transaction via Hyphen. I paid $8.69 for the ETH gas fee, two cents for the Polygon gas fee, and 0.1% liquidity provider fee, which I'll explain in a bit. And the whole transaction took less than a minute, and the entire cost was about $9, as opposed to $57. At that rate, the native bridge would have cost more than six times more, and would have taken seven to eight times longer. Then sending 0.3 ETH back, and Polygon's native bridge estimated it at two cents on Polygon, and $93 on Ethereum, and it would take 45 minutes to three hours. But I did it through Hyphen, and I didn't pay any gas on Polygon thanks to their gasless feature. I paid about $21 for the ETH gas fee to receive the ETH in my ETH wallet. And again, the whole thing took less than a minute. Again, $21 versus $93, and less than a minute versus 45 minutes to three hours. Oh, and if I'd been transferring USDC or USDT over the bridge, I could have paid for gas in those tokens rather than paying it in ETH. It's seriously so awesome to use. And if you go from Polygon to Avalanche or back, it's gasless in both directions. And if you go from Ethereum to Avalanche, you can do it with native ETH, whereas the Avalanche bridge requires you to use wrapped ETH, so you can save on gas by taking out that transaction as well. You can even have the receiving address on the other side of the bridge be different than the address you're sending from, so that's a nice added feature as well. So then there's the question as to how it actually works, and it's actually really simple. They maintain liquidity pools on these various chains, so when I move ETH, from Ethereum to Polygon, my ETH went into the liquidity pool on Ethereum and wrapped ETH came out of the liquidity pool on Polygon into my wallet. That's why there's a 0.1% liquidity provider fee for the transfer. Then if there's an imbalance among those different liquidity pools, the smart contract transfers funds across the chain's native bridge to keep them balanced. So the native chains are still important, but that doesn't mean that we have to use them. 
The next product of theirs I want to cover is what enables gasless transactions. This is how dApp developers can pay the gas fees for their user transactions. They have multiple ways for devs to implement this, but rather than covering all of those, let's just do a general explanation and what it means for users since that's more relevant to this channel. Here's how it works. Each dApp will have a gas tank that they can top off at any time through the Biconomy dashboard or by writing to the contract directly. When users interact with that dApp smart contract, instead of signing a transaction and paying a transaction fee, users sign a signature, which doesn't cost any gas. Then that signature allows Biconomy to relay the transaction to a trusted forwarder. The trusted forwarder is a contract that uses EIP 2771 to pay the gas fee on behalf of the user. And in this case, the gas comes out of the dApp's gas tank. That's why these are called meta transactions. The user isn't signing a transaction, but rather giving a smart contract permission to sign a transaction for them. Thus, the user saves the gas cost. But it goes even further than this. You combine it with hyphen and a user can sign a signature on one chain. The relayer can move assets cross chain, do transactions over there, move it back all in one transaction, and without the user even needing to know what a layer two network is or having to pay any gas. That's so crazy. And this makes so much sense. I think dApps on every EVM chain should have this for their users. But what if your dApp is on Ethereum and you can't afford to pay users gas fees? On December 1st, almost $6 million was spent on ETH gas on Uniswap alone. $6 million in one day on one dApp. For perspective, Uniswap raised $11 million in seed funding. So obviously, dApps can't pay their users gas fees on Ethereum. But with Forward, they can enable users to pay for gas in tokens other than Ethereum. To begin with, we're talking about stable coins. So imagine paying for gas on Ethereum with USDT, USDC, or DAI, with more tokens being added over time. There are a couple really cool benefits to this. First, users don't have to spend their ETH, which is appreciating in value and creates a taxable event, so they can spend stables instead. And this is especially true for people using stable coins in lending protocols or other DeFi protocols. If you're mainly using stable coins in DeFi, it would be nice to use stable coins in your transactions. Secondly, there won't be any stuck transactions or any overpaid gas fees. Since Biconomy Relayer handles the ETH fees on the back end, they automatically pay the most optimal gas fees. If there's any congestion, they gradually bump up the fees so users don't overpay. They also make transactions more efficient by relaying multiple transactions together in batches, which can increase gas savings by up to 50%, and they've been dialing in their algorithm for well over a year now. I've linked a Medium article that they released last year showing how efficient this is, and I recommend reading it if you're interested. It's, it's pretty good. Now let's look at the tokenomics. Bico is the primary utility and governance token of the Biconomy blockchain. Network fees must be paid in the Bico token and node operators must pay a transaction fee in Bico anytime they add information to the chain. In order to become a node operator, you have to stake your Bico and you earn tokens proportional to your Bico stake. And of course, stakes can be slashed in case of bad behavior. If you want to stake your Bico, but you don't want to operate a node, you can delegate your stake to node operators as you would in other protocols and share in the rewards they earn. Regarding governance, any Bico holder can propose and vote on decisions affecting the protocol. This will come up more as their plan towards progressive decentralization continues, but it's still pretty early. Now here's the token distribution. The total supply is a billion Bico. 6% went to the pre-seed round, 6.38% for the seed round, 12% for the private round, half a percent for the strategic round, 5% for the public sale, 22% for team and advisors, 10% for the foundation, and 38.12% for community and rewards. And here are the token vesting schedules. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at these because I'm not gonna read through all of them. And then here is the release schedule. You can see it will take four years for all tokens to be in circulation. These three products, hyphen, gasless, and forward, are each really cool on their own, and they're already getting adopted, but I think that the real magic happens when they're combined. Things like having a gasless bridge or moving USDC from ETH to Polygon, paying the ETH gas fee using USDC, and then having no gas fee on the Polygon side. Or imagine a yield farming protocol that can seamlessly move assets across multiple chains to find the best yield quickly and very gas efficient. Or imagine crypto gaming projects using this. I can't stress this enough. 
Games should not charge transaction fees to users for every action they take. And with Byconomy, games built upon EVM compatible chains don't have to charge transaction fees to users. These games are advertised as play to earn, but oftentimes they slowly eat away at your wallet as you play them because of transaction fees. The ones that don't do this will have a strong advantage and will lead toward more adoption of those games. And if they're using Byconomy to do this, then it's gonna have more adoption of Byconomy. Anyway, you've heard my thoughts on Byconomy, but sound off your thoughts in the comments below. If you made it this far and think you got some value for watching, a thumbs up down there is always helpful and I appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and keep exploring.